All India Radio presents Morning News. Good morning. I'm Anuja Kumar and with me is Sunil Verma. The headlines. Prime Minister Narendra Modi launches development projects worth 650 crore rupees on Goa Liberation Day. Center to bring new cooperative policy soon to also set up a national level cooperative university. Government to launch Good Governance Week today to redress public grievances at village level across the country. Indian Navy stealth destroyer Mormugao begins her maiden sea sortie to be commissioned by mid 2022. Top Indian CEOs expect country's economy to grow at 9 to 10 percent during current fiscal. Cold wave conditions to continue for next two days in northwest India. India beat Nepal 1-0 to enter the final of SAF Under-19 Women's Championship. and BCCI announces Indian squad for under 19 World Cup 2022 As India marches towards administering 150 crore vaccine doses against COVID-19 news about the new corona variant is a cause of concern in this situation we appeal to our listeners to get fully vaccinated at the earliest and help others get vaccinated Please continue to follow these three simple steps to stay safe. Wear a face mask, maintain two gaz ki duri for social distancing, focus on hand and face hygiene. For any covid related information and guidance, contact National Helpline numbers 011-2397-8046 and 1075. As our nation celebrates the 75th year of independence, a series of events are being organized by the government as a part of Azadi ka Amrit Mahotsav. To commemorate the occasion as a Jan Utsav, All India Radio News brings its listeners a special quiz on India's freedom movement and its glorious history. The quiz is being conducted every Monday and Tuesday in the morning news since 16th of August and will continue till 15th August 2022. India Post has joined hands as the logistics partner with All India Radio News for the Amrit Mahotsav quiz. And coming to our 37th question of the Amrit Mahotsav quiz in English. A brave commander assisted Queen Veer Mangai Velu Nachiyar the first female ruler to resist the british colonial power this commander led the queen's army and sacrificed her life to save the queen and her land who is this valiant commander i repeat the question a brave commander assisted queen veer mangai velu nachiyar the first female ruler to resist the british colonial power this commander led the queen's army and sacrificed her life to save the queen and her land who is this valiant commander Listeners can send their responses to the question over WhatsApp on 8826546262. I repeat 8826546262 or through email on amritmahotsavquiz at the rate prasarbharati.gov.in. I repeat amritmahotsavquiz at the rate prasarbharati.gov.in. And now the news in detail. Prime Minister Narendra Modi yesterday participated in the Goa Liberation Day celebrations at Shyama Prasad Mukherjee Stadium in Taligaon. He felicitated freedom fighters and veterans of Operation Vijay at the function. During his address on this occasion the Prime Minister said Goa is top in good governance per capita income and several other fronts. He said that Atmanirbhar Bharat Swayampurna Goa is a grand success in the state. The Prime Minister said that during its struggle for liberation people of Goa kept the flame for independence burning for the longest time Luis de Menezes Brangaja Tristra Brangaja da Kuna Julio Menezes jaise naam ho Purushottam Kakodkar Lakshmikant Bhambre jaise senani ho ya phir बाला राया मापारी जैसे युवाओं के बलिदान हमारे कितने ही सेनानियों ने 
आजादी के बाद भी आंदोलन किए पीड़ाएं झेली बलिदान दिया लेकिन इस मूवमेंट को रुकने नहीं दिया आजादी के ठीक पहले राम मनोहर लोहिया जी से लेकर आजादी के बाद जनसंघ के कितने ही नेताओं तक ये मुक्ति आंदोलन लगातार चला था The Prime Minister congratulated the Goa government for completing 100% coverage of first dose to all its eligible population. He appreciated Chief Minister Pramod Sawant for keeping the pace of development up in the state. The Prime Minister urged the people of the state to set new goals to achieve greater heights. Aap sab milkar jis tarah Goa ko atma nirbhar banane ki aur aage badh rahe hain jis tarah vartaman sarkar khud चलकर डोर टू डोर जा रही है सरकारी सेवाएं जिस तरह ऑनलाइन होकर नागरिकों के हाथ में आ रही हैं आज जैसे आजादी के अमृत महोत्सव में देश आजादी के 100 साल के लिए नए संकल्प ले रहा है वैसे ही मैं आह्वान करता हूं कि गोवा अपनी मुक्ति के 75 साल होने पर कहा पहुंचेगा इसके लिए नए संकल्प ले नए लक्ष्य तय करे Remembering the dynamic leadership qualities of former Chief Minister Manohar Parrikar, Prime Minister Modi said that Goa is on the path of development as envisaged by Parrikar. The Prime Minister mentioned that when an invitation was given to Pope Francis to come to India, he termed it as the greatest gift. Mr Modi said this reflects Pope's love for India's diversity and vibrant democracy. The Prime Minister laid a wreath on the Martyrs Memorial at Azad Maidan in Panji. He witnessed a fly past and a sail parade at Miramar Beach. The Prime Minister also inaugurated and laid foundation stone of several development projects worth over 650 crore rupees in the state. Union Home Minister Amit Shah has said that a national level cooperative university will be set up soon in the country to further expand the cooperative sector. He was speaking at the convocation ceremony of Vaikuntha Mehta National Cooperative Management Institute in Pune Maharashtra yesterday emphasizing the need for expansion of cooperative sector in the villages Mr Shah said this sector has made significant contributions in the development of the country since the pre-independence period he said a cooperative sector policy is being formulated under the leadership of Prime Minister Narendra Modi to promote the cooperative movement which will be implemented across the country soon Mr Shah who is on a two day visit to Maharashtra inaugurated a new building of the Central Forensic Science Laboratory as CFSL and the campus of 5th Battalion of NDRF in Pune he also unveiled a statue of Dr Baba Saheb Ambedkar inside the extended new building of Pune Municipal Corporation and laid the foundation stone of Chhatrapati Shivaji Maharaj Smarak in the campus of the Pune Corporation Minister of State for Personnel Public Grievances and Pensions Dr Jitendra Singh will inaugurate Good Governance Week in New Delhi today as part of Azadi ka Amrit Mahotsav celebrations the theme of Good Governance Week is Prashasan gaon ki or a nationwide campaign for the redressal of public grievances and improving service delivery will be held in all districts states and union territories during the week long event more than 700 district collectors will visit tehsil and panchayat samiti headquarters to provide timely grievance redressal and improve service delivery the minister will also inaugurate an exhibition on good governance practices The Election Laws Amendment Bill 2021 is scheduled to be introduced in the Lok Sabha today. Discussions on climate change and price rise are scheduled in the Lower House of Parliament. The Mediation Bill 2021 is scheduled to be introduced in the Rajya Sabha today. The Narcotics, Drugs and Psychotropic Substances Amendment Bill 2021 is scheduled to be taken up for discussion in the Upper House today. Central Public Sector Enterprises CPSCs of the power sector have registered 45% growth in capital expenditure investment over previous year. Power Ministry said the target for capital expenditure of the CPSCs is around 50,690 crore rupees in the current financial year. The ministry said CPSCs have so far invested more than 32,000 crore rupees which is around 63% of the annual capital expenditure target. 
The government has said that some media speculation doubting the feasibility of LIC IPO this fiscal year is not correct. In a tweet, Secretary Department of Investment and Public Asset Management Tuhin Kantapande reiterated that the plan is on course for the IPO in the last quarter of this fiscal. Over 137 crore 49 lakh doses of COVID vaccine have been administered so far under the nationwide vaccination drive. India's active case load currently stands at 83,913, which is the lowest in 570 days. Active cases account for less than 1% of total cases. The recovery rate is currently at 98.38%. A total of 7,469 recoveries in the last 24 hours have increased total recoveries to over 3 crore 41 lakh. 7,081 new cases were reported in the last 24 hours. In a bilingual live phone in program Corona Jagrukta series phone in with public Dr Sanjay Pandey of GB Pant Hospital New Delhi will be with us tonight to answer the queries related to corona virus listeners can ask questions to the expert from 9:30 pm on telephone number 0112342 and 0112342 1764 You can also post your queries on our Twitter handle at the rate AIR News Alerts by hashtag Ask AIR. You are listening to the morning news on All India Radio. A reminder of the headlines before we move on. Prime Minister Narendra Modi launches development projects worth 650 crore rupees on Goa Liberation Day. Sent her to bring new cooperative policy soon to also set up a national level cooperative university. government to launch good governance week today to redress public grievances at village level across the country indian navy's stealth destroyer murmugao begins her maiden sea sortie to be commissioned by mid 2022 top indian ceos expect country's economy to grow at 9 to 10% during current fiscal cold wave conditions to continue for next two days in northwest india India beat Nepal 1-0 to enter the final of SAS Under-19 Women's Championship and BCCI announces Indian squad for Under-19 World Cup 2022. For quick news updates round the clock, follow us on our Twitter handle at AIR News Alerts. Welcome back to the morning news on All India Radio. Indian Navy conducted the maiden sea trials for Mormugal, the second indigenous stealth destroyer of the P15B class yesterday. Built by Mazgaon Dock Shipbuilders Limited MDSL, the ship has been named after the port town in Goa. The Mormugal was launched in September 2016 when the late Manohar Parrikar was the defense minister. The Indian Navy plans to commission the stealth destroyer in mid 2022 when it will be known as INS Mormugal. Mormugal will add significantly to the Indian Navy's combat capabilities. The sea trials come less than a month after the recent commissioning of INS Visakhapatnam, the first of the P15B contract. Indian economy is all set for a strong rebound in the current fiscal posting a growth rate of 9 to 10% says the CEO's poll conducted among the members of the CII National Council a large number of CEOs polled however appeared worried about the impact of the new covid variant omicron on services and the manufacturing sector as regards growth about 10% of the ceos polled believe that it could even exceed 10% during 2021-22 cii president tv narendran said the government's strong emphasis on public works timely interventions to boost liquidity and several reforms carried out in the recent months have buoyed the optimism on higher economic growth And now let's listen to our special program Azadi ka safar highlighting the importance of the day during the freedom struggle 
आजादी का अमृत महोत्सव आजादी का सफर विद ए आई आर न्यूज बर्थ ऑफ नेशन इंडिया ग्लोरियस फ्रीडम स्ट्रगल इज वन ऑफ द ग्रेटेस्ट स्ट्रगल द मॉडर्न वर्ल्ड हैज एवर विटनेस्ड ए आई आर न्यूज ब्रिंग्स यू अ ग्लिम्स ऑफ द स्ट्रगल एवरी डे इन टूडेज एपिसोड वी रिमेम्बर सोशल एंड रिलीजियस रिफॉर्मर गोविंद गुरु who was born on the 20th of December 1858 in Bansia, Rajasthan. Also known as Govind Giri, he was the pivotal force in uniting Bheels to demand an affirmed identity in British India. Govind Guru started working with the Bheel community during the Great Famine of 1899-1900 and saw their oppression at the hands of the princely states he quickly saw the social setup and liquor as the primary causes of the prevalent problems and decided to fight the malays he started bhagat sampraday in 1908 to this end the guru's disciples followed strict rules including abstinence from liquor and meat the adoption of hygienic practices and the rejection of bonded labor work Govind Giri garnered a large following among the tribals in the princely states of Sant, Banswara, Dungarpur and the British districts of Panchmahal. These reforms did not go down well with many princely states as revenues from liquor shops went down and labor became scarce. Govind Guru was arrested and to further pressurize him his wife and child were also arrested. However, he was released in April 1913 without being tried and ordered to leave Dungarpur state. In November 1913, after an attempt by the ruler of erstwhile Eder state to capture Govind Guru, Guru and his followers formed a defensive position at Mangad. On November the 17th, 1913, the troops of the princely states attacked them in which several bheels died and Govind Giri and his lieutenant Dhirji Panja were captured. Govind Giri was initially given a death sentence but was later sent for life imprisonment. However, he was released from prison in Hyderabad in 1919 on the condition that he would not participate in political activities. He was also prohibited from entering several princely states. Govind Guru died on the 30th of October 1931 in Kamboi near Limdi in present-day Panchmahal district of Gujarat. We salute this great Indian patriot. We also remember freedom fighter Vakkam Majid who was born on December the 20th 1909 in Travancore. From his childhood Majid was attracted to the social reform movement of his uncle Vakkam Malvi as well as Narayan Guru. When the Indian National Movement emerged in Kerala, Majid was in the forefront of its leadership. He was one of the early architects of the Indian National Congress in Travancore. Majid participated in the Quit India Movement in 1942 and got jailed for several months. When the idea of independent Travancore was mooted, Majid was a staunch opponent of it and took part in the agitation against the move. He was also a staunch opponent of the two nation theory and Pakistan movement. Majid argued that only a secular nationalist India could keep the heart and soul of the masses together. When the INA hero Bakkam Khader was sentenced to death by the British, Majid visited him in the Madras Central Jail. It was Majid who brought Khader's last letter to his father before the hanging. After independence Majid was elected unopposed to the Travancore Cochin State Assembly from the Attingal constituency. He remained committed to his motherland till his death in the year 2000. We salute this great nationalist. On 20th of December 
the Karibellor uprising took place, which is seen as the first major movement in the Malabar region by the farmers for land, food and freedom. The uprising was to fight the landlords who wanted to smuggle paddy from the village at a time of acute starvation. When farmers opposed the landlords, they were indiscriminately fired at and two farmers were killed while many others were injured. It was the result of the Karivillur struggle that the peasants got land in the village which was earlier vested with only a few landlords. We salute the martyrs. That brings us to the end of this episode of Azadi Ka Safar with AIR News. See you in the next episode tomorrow. Best wishes to all consumers for Azadi Ka Amrit Mahotsav. Hallmark ensures purity of gold. Always purchase Hallmark gold jewelry. For any consumer-related complaints, please contact National Consumer Helpline's toll-free number 14404, issued in public interest by Department of Consumer Affairs, Government of India. Jago Grahak, Jago. Azadi ke andolan ke khazani mein aise dheron shabd जिन्होंने बदल दिए इतिहास तारीख बदलने वाले लफ्जों पर आकाशवाणी समाचार ला रहा है विशेष कार्यक्रम धरोहर हर सोमवार इन टुडेज एपिसोड ऑफ धरोहर वी विल ब्रिंग यू द वॉइस ऑफ फ्रीडम फाइटर एंड मेंबर ऑफ कंस्टिट्यूएंट असेंबली हरि विष्णु कामत इन आवर सीरीज The New Services Division brings you glimpses of the year 2021 in its special year end series The Year That Was. Today we take a look at New Education Policy 2020 which aims to achieve 100% youth and adult literacy. Prime Minister Narendra Modi had said the National Education Policy 2020 will give wings to millions of dreams of our youth addressing the education community in the country on the first anniversary of national education policy on the 29th of july this year mr modi had said the education policy will play a key role in india's golden future as the nation is on the verge of entering 75 years of independence rashtriya shiksha niti ke tahat shuru hui yojnaye naye bharat ke nirman mein बहुत बड़ी भूमिका निभाएगी भारत के जिस सुनहरे भविष्य के संकल्प के साथ हम आजादी का अमृत महोत्सव मना रहे हैं उस भविष्य की ओर हमें आज की नई पीढ़ी ही ले जाएगी भविष्य हम कितना आगे जाएंगे कितनी ऊंचाई प्राप्त करेंगे ये इस बात पर निर्भर करेगा कि हम अपने युवाओं को आज कैसी शिक्षा दे रहे हैं कैसी दिशा दे रहे हैं इसलिए मैं मानता हूं भारत की नई राष्ट्रीय शिक्षा नीति राष्ट्र निर्माण के महायज्ञ में बड़े फैक्टर में से एक है वी हैव मोर फ्रॉम आवर कोरेस्पॉन्डेंट दिस इज द फर्स्ट एजुकेशन पॉलिसी ऑफ ट्वेंटी फर्स्ट सेंचुरी एंड इट हैज रिप्लेस द थर्टी फोर ईयर ओल्ड नेशनल पॉलिसी ऑन एजुकेशन एन पी ई नाइनटीन एटी सिक्स बिल्ट ऑन द फाउंडेशनल पिलर्स ऑफ एक्सेस इक्विटी क्वालिटी एफोर्डेबिलिटी एंड अकाउंटेबिलिटी दिस पॉलिसी इज अलाइंड टू द ट्वेंटी थर्टी एजेंडा फॉर सस्टेनेबल डेवलपमेंट इट एम्स टू ट्रांसफॉर्म इंडिया इन टू ए वाइब्रेंट नॉलेज सोसाइटी एंड ग्लोबल नॉलेज सुपर पार बाय मेकिंग बोथ स्कूल एंड कॉलेज एजुकेशन मोर हॉलिस्टिक flexible multidisciplinary the education policy is also aimed at bringing out the unique capabilities of each student the national education policy 2020 is the guiding philosophy for changing the learning landscape making education holistic and for building strong foundations for an atmanirbhar bharat with dipendra kumar and pamish ar news In Maharashtra, Lavul village of Majal Gaon Tehsil in Bir district is troubled by strange monkey menace for the past few days. Three monkeys enter the village from adjoining forest. These monkeys pick any dog puppy and throw it from tall trees or high-rise buildings. Monkeys started this revengeful act after a group of dogs killed a baby monkey. 
ज्ञानेश्वर सन ऑफ विलेज सरपंच पंच फुला काजले गिव्स दिस इन्फॉर्मेशन जो बंदर है वो गांव में आया था अपने गांव में आने के बाद उसने कुत्ते के बच्चों को उठाना चालू किया कुत्ते को बच्चों को ले जाता था उनको खाने को नहीं मिलता था तो कुत्ते के बच्चे मर जाते थे और गांव के बच्चों के पीछे लगता था गांव घर में घुसकर तकलीफ देता था इस वजह से बच्चे भी स्कूल में जाने के लिए डर रहे थे सर अभी तो गाँव के बहुत से लोग कह रहे है की बंदर का बच्चा है उसके उसके बच्चों को कुत्तों ने मारा था इस वजह से वो कुत्ते के बच्चों को उठाकर उनको मार रहा था सौ से डेढ़ बच्चे कुत्ते के बच्चों को अभी तक उसने मारा है On to sports in football India progressed to the final of the SAF under 19 women's championship 2021 beating Nepal 1-0 in the last group stage match in Dhaka yesterday India will be playing the final match on Wednesday The BCCI's All India Junior Selection Committee has announced a 17 member Indian squad for the upcoming ICC under 19 World Cup 2022 The 14th edition of the Under-19 World Cup will take place in West Indies from January the 14th to February the 5th. The Indian squad will be led by Yash Dhal from Delhi, who earlier was announced as Team India's captain for ACC Under-19 Asia Cup. Other members of the team are Harnoor Singh, Angkrish Raghuvanshi, SK Rashid, Vice Captain, Nishant Sindhu, Siddharth Yadav, Anishwar Gautam, Dinesh Bana, Wicket Keeper, Aradhya Yadav, Wicket Keeper, Raj Angad Bhava, Manav Parakh, Kaushal Tambe, R.S. Hangar K. Kar, Vasuvats, Vicky Otswal, Ravi Kumar and Garv Sangwan. Standby players are Rishit Reddy, Uday Saharan, Anj Gosai, Amrit Raj Upadhyay and P.M. Singh Rathor. India Meteorological Department has said that cold wave conditions are likely to continue during the next two days in northwest India. IMD said dry northwesterly winds of about 10 to 15 km per hour are likely to prevail over plains of northwest India till Tuesday enhancing the adverse impact of cold wave and cold day conditions. Along with it, dense fog in isolated pockets over Uttarakhand will be witnessed during the next two days and over Punjab and Haryana on December the 23rd and December the 24th Now let us take a look at the weather forecast for today Srinagar will have mainly clear sky becoming partly cloudy towards evening or night Jammu will have partly cloudy sky becoming generally cloudy towards afternoon or evening or night Leh is likely to witness mainly clear sky Gilgit will have mainly clear sky National capital Delhi will have shallow fog today and Mumbai will have mainly clear sky. And now an overview of today's newspapers. India Central Asian Nations to expand defense trade counterterrorism ties by the Tribune. The Hindu ad six nations call for immediate aid for Afghans. The Asian Age notes bill for Aadhaar link to poll rolls on Lok Sabha list today. Ringing the alarm bell the pioneer notes Omicron cases in India surged to 147 while the Economic Times mentions about IT majors tre- treading with caution on return to office the Indian Express informs about the national capital city works to reopen covid centers and finally alarmed at the growing danger from cyber attacks and threats to national security the times of india writes unified cyber security task force by march before we end the bulletin a reminder of today's question of the amrit mahotsav quiz A brave commander assisted Queen Veera Mangai Rani Velu Nachiar, the first female ruler to resist the British colonial power. This commander led the Queen's army and sacrificed her life to save the Queen and her land. Who is this valiant commander? WhatsApp your response on 8265462262 or through email on Amrit Mahotsav Quiz at the rate prasarbharti.gov.in. Celebrate 75 years of India's independence by participating in Amrit Mahotsav Quiz with EIR News. And now, before we end the bulletin, the headlines once again. Prime Minister Narendra Modi launches development projects worth 650 crore rupees on Goa Liberation Day. Center to bring new cooperative policy soon to also set up a national level cooperative university. Government to launch Good Governance Week today to redress public grievances at village level across the country. Indian Navy stealth destroyer Marmugal begins a maiden sea sortie to be commissioned by mid 2022. Top Indian CEOs expect country's economy to grow at 9 to 10 percent during current fiscal. Cold wave conditions to continue for next two days in northwest India. India beat Nepal 1-0 to enter the final of SAF Under-19 Women's Championship, and BCCI announces Indian squad for Under-19 World Cup 2022. 
And with that, we end the morning news. Have a nice day.